Three, two, one. Hey, we're live. It's Sunday night, live from my bedroom in Carolyn's car. <laughs> it is Sunday night of Labor Day weekend, featuring <laughs> Carolyn Ostfall, uh, author of Ornamental Graces, Rightfully Ours, and Stay With Me. And uh, your co host is Erin McCole Cup, author of a whole bunch of other books, most recently, Jane E. Friendless Orphan re-release series and special guest vanilla ice no i'm really i'm just, I'm just kidding about that vanilla ice will not be here sorry mr ice don't send lawyers because like really you would get nothing it's like blood from a stone anyway um thank you for tuning into sabbath rest book talk this evening where we talk about how fiction makes us human and fiction is good for us and all the wonderful things about fiction since since it is September, we went with the idea of new beginnings and how new beginnings, the human approach to starting over is unique. And it's part of what makes us different from the other animals, makes us something a little special here on this earth. The one thing I remember like about new beginnings, this is nonfiction, but when years and years ago, we went to Disney World and at Animal Kingdom, they had the... Um, I think it's like the wings of Asia or some you know thing, and they were talking about at the, the bird show at Animal Kingdom. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, the person who was running the show brought out an a bird that had been on the verge of extinction and no longer was because humans are the only species who are able to change their ways so that another species can survive. And I have always reflected on that ever since then. I know I had a deep spiritual experience at, at Disney World. <laughs> Go figure. Thank you, Carolyn. I'm glad you found that funny. But it's it's true. We are the only species that can really turn ourselves around and make a totally fresh start. And it's a, a lot about the circumstances around us. But even more so, I think it's about the what we make of our circumstances. Oh, tonight, we are looking at three books. We're going to talk about Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. We're going to talk about The Good Master by Kate Serity. And both of those books are sort of children's. Both of those books are sort of YA. So they both kind of straddle that, that little border there. Um, and then last, I think I'm going to talk about this one last because we've got a giveaway for it. We're going to talk about Opal's Jubilee by Leslie Lynch. It is one of my easily top 10 favorite books ever. And it's just, Leslie Lynch writes powerful fiction about the power of true justice. It's called restorative justice. Seeing justice not in terms of just improving the victim circumstances, but also restoring humanity to the criminal and turning that criminal from a criminal in, back into a human. Not that they weren't human before, but there's a lot of dehumanization in the process of not just, you know, being in jail, but also just going back to when the crime was committed and why this person committed a crime. So without further ado, let's talk about our books this evening. Ah, I almost forgot. I'm raving about Leslie's book. Leslie has been generous enough to offer to us. the. Uh, she's going to put up, she's not going to, she has a signed copy of Opal's Jubilee. So an actual paperback copy available to a commenter with a U.S. mailing address, address uh, who's watching this video tonight. So all you have to do to win is comment that you have a U.S. mailing address. And I think I'm going to make it so every comment you make is an entry. Maybe that's a little foolhardy, but let's go with it but it has to be a comment about what we're talking about okay you can't just like comment 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 or i have a u.s mailing address anyway so if you would like to win a copy of opal's jubilee by leslie lynch then what you can do is comment on our video here and we will see what we can do to announce a winner for that book. Just make sure you, you have a US mailing address so we can send it. Otherwise you won't be able to get it. All right. So Carolyn, I have filled up enough of our airtime. Let's hear what you think of Anne of Green Gables and the theme of new beginnings in Anne of Green Gables. Okay, well, great Anne of Green Gables, unlike many people that read this and loved it as a child, never read it. 
an audio adaption of this last summer with my kids in the car. Just experience with it. So I don't have all these feelings from childhood that, you know, oh, I'm the beloved Anne. So it was just listening to it as adults. So I don't know if I have a little different. Kids enjoyed it. And, um, you know, she's really, I think with kids, it's so, new beginnings are so natural because they adapt so well. And, you know, Anne's brought into this whole new situation where she's with um, um, Matthew and um, Marilla. And she's really, they're expecting to have a boy brought to them. And here they have Anne with an E at the end. And so she's already expectations. She's not a demure little thing. Um, and they both have to adapt on either side. So it's a new beginning for everybody, really, in that respect. So, you know, my kids and I loved it. They loved all the antics and the kind of fun stuff she gets into. Um, and I think, you know, like I said, it's like a fresh, children are so good at fresh starts. Anne really brings out the, um, I don't know, the, the liveliness, the, the fun in something new. Sometimes when we're older, I think we view things with more trepidation. We don't like change as much. But Anne just embraces life, and, and it's good. Yeah, I love that. I, I think what you say, especially about how children are just natural at fresh starts, um, I think what I have always, not always, I didn't notice this when I, I first read this when I was in college, and I wasn't even assigned it. It was just in the library of a family I was babysitting for. Um, and what I think as an adult was the most powerful new beginning to me was not Anne. It was Marilla and Matthew because they, I mean, if anybody needed a fresh start, it was Marilla and Matthew. I mean, they basically had written on across the East Gable window, the people who live in this house live in a rut. <laughs> like there's <laughs> really no other way to put it because they're just so set in their ways. And then along comes Anne, who's basically a mistake. She wasn't supposed to be there. She was supposed to be a boy. And so not only do they have to, like they've admitted the possibility of, okay, let's start over with some, you know, some new situation. Let's adopt a boy to take over the farm basically. And then it's not a boy, it's a girl. So it's just this constant series of new beginnings throughout the book, especially for Matthew and Marilla. And I think the new beginning for Anne, I think, takes place over the process of the book through how she matures. You know, she starts the book as, you know, what is it that um, Miss Rachel Lind says, you know, her tongue is hung in the middle so it can flap at both ends, <laughs> which I, I have a child that that has been said about and not by me. <laughs> so it's, but it's, you know, it's charming. And, Towards the end, Marilla asks Anne, you know, that you don't, not asks, points out, you don't talk as much as you used to, and you don't say the big fancy words that you used to say. And Anne points out that it, my thoughts are so much sweeter now when I do keep them to myself. And how they, the change of Marilla, who was always just sort of, you know, dark and sarcastic, and then she became you know, able to express emotions towards the end where Anne was able to rein hers in. Yeah. And I thought that was really a, 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 a powerful statement on how children change us and mm -hmm. how children change into adults. So, yeah. I mean, Anne, some, sometimes, I say sometimes we, we choose new beginnings and sometimes new beginnings are thrust upon us. <laughs> You know, like you said they're in a rut. They didn't choose really a new beginning. They wanted more of the same, but with more help, more muscle. <laughs> and they had a new beginning they didn't expect, which is sometimes the best kind. And really the new beginning is thrust on Anne too, but I hadn't thought of it as it was thrust on, you know, the Cuthbert siblings that they, they didn't choose any of what they got, but how through getting a fresh start, Anne became more than she ever thought she could be. And even more so, I think, Matthew and Marilla, but especially Marilla, became more than they had ever anticipated they would be. And I, I have to say, as an adult with children, the scene at the end, I mean, it's an old book, so I'm not spoiling anything. The scene when Matthew dies at the end is just absolutely, just one of my favorite 
it's probably melodramatic just a teensy bit, but it's just one of my favorite mm -hmm. scenes about, you know, the, the parental love between, you know, Matthew yeah. and Anne. And it's, and he's just such a wonderful character to begin with. So anything yeah. else you wanted to add on, on Anne before we go to the good master? Ooh, hold on, are you cutting out? cut out? Nothing more to add on Anne. Okay, let's talk about The Good Master. What did you think of The Good Master by Kate Serity? I really enjoyed this. You know, when I, I started, my daughter started reading ahead of me, and all she'd say was, I hate Kate. <laughs> and that's all I could get from her. So I said, oh, that's okay. It's the protagonist might not be likable, <laughs> at least in the beginning, but I really enjoyed it. It's, um, setting is unique to anything I've read. So it's in Hungary in the early part of the 20th century, and the family is out on a farm and you've got basically the, the parents are called mother and father. I don't think they're, they're mentioned. Um, and their son whose name I'll probably mispronounce is a Jancy is how I was. I, I found out how to say it. It's, it's Yanchi. 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 Okay. I, I looked up a Hungarian pronunciation guide. I actually have two very good friends who are Hungarian. So, I mean, I don't think they're watching this right now. But um, if if they are, it's just correct me next time I see you. But I'm pretty confident <laughs> it's Yanshi. But anyway, okay, so Yanshi. Yes, Yanshi is um, their only son, and they bring in his cousin Kate, who is sent to them because she's a poor, delicate creature recovering from the measles, and the farm will do her some good. And again, just like in Anna Green Gables, this isn't quite what they expected. She's not delicate in any way. She gets into all kinds of trouble, and um, not a demure little creature either. So, for a fresh beginning. But again, she stirs up the whole family, and so they have a beginning again, too. Yeah, and not only is she not, she's not a demure little creature, she's pretty much hell on wheels like she's yeah. <laughs> dangerous and destructive and disrespectful and when your daughter when you said your daughter was like i hate kate i hate kate. yeah all right i'll admit that's kind of what i was thinking too when i was reading but okay go ahead <laughs> that was it too um the nice thing about this too and i realized it's same with anna green gables it seems like the new beginning doesn't happen on its own. There has to be someone receptive on the other end to you starting afresh. And so that's what the good master, which is Yanchi's father is. He's the master of their, I don't know if you call it a farm. It's a little more than a farm. He's got animals. He's got crops. Yeah, he's like a, he's it's like a ranch. I mean, I kind of thought of it. It's, yeah. It was like a Texas ranch just in Hungary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's a good analogy. So he's the one that has to be you know he's looked on by everyone as the good master because he's so he's fair he's honest he's kind-hearted and it's really him and his uh, his love but it's not a gushy mushy love it's a respectful welcoming thing up here kind of love and that's what it allows kate to be more than the hell on wheels <laughs> that she starts out as and and become who she is meant to be their family and I like how, again, it was uh, it was more a, a case of the child was sent for a new beginning, but in the end, it was really the adult who needed a new beginning. Because basically, you see the author finally, not finally, it, I, I really hated Kate for the per first several chapters uh, until yeah. we found out why her father sent her away. Her father basically said, I can't deal with this child anymore. And so I've just got to get rid of her. Mm -hmm. And so when you see that's where she came from, you get the sense, okay, she is, you know, at one of those any attention is good attention kids. And yeah. how the life that she has to lead on the ranch and the opportunities that living on that ranch gets her it gets her in touch with her family with her her roots as you know a hungarian there are several folk tales that are woven throughout kate sarity's uh throughout the good master that it's sort of like she gets a new beginning by getting in touch with the past and that was really 
not I can't think of another book that that really treated a new beginning from that perspective. However, I do have to say, I don't know what it is because I think you just said on on Twitter a couple days ago that you are, guys are in the process of reading Heidi. Yes. Home. Okay, and we just did that over at the beginning of the summer, and I would really like to see it. Sub we just we have read all of these books where the child from the city gets a fresh start by going out to live in the country, and I yeah. would love to see a book where the country child gets a fresh start and gets some sort of benefit from moving into a city because there's, I can't think of a single book that's written like that. It's always the cities are horrible, yeah. these horrible, evil places and, you know, nothing good comes of them. You have to go out to the country where the, the cow, you know, the, the milk comes right from the cow and yeah. you, know, you, you have to get swept away in a river and, you know, picked up by a horse in order to survive <laughs> and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. I would be curious to see a book like that. Yeah, me I, too. Yeah. I don't know if I'd ever want to write it though. It might, it would probably be too hard. I have enough difficult things to write right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got a comment mm -hmm. here, uh, going back to Anna Green Gables really briefly. I don't know if anybody saw, but Barb Shishkevich, uh, read Anna Green Gables as a middle schooler. And then again, last summer. And also I, I can relate to this relating to Marilla. I have a soft spot for Matt, for Matthew, but I could definitely see myself in Marilla. I, that's, that's totally me. Anything else on the good master? Um, no, I don't think so. Again, I like, it's a, it's a great book for kids, you know, and, and, um, I mean, I enjoyed it as an adult, but my nine-year-old is liking it too. And, and I, there's a one little part not related to new beginnings, but the way they treat St. Nicholas was just great. Faith is woven very neatly into it, um, just as a natural course of their lives. And, and I enjoyed that part of it too. Yeah. I, I like that as well. It was very, very natural, as you said. Let's, uh, last but not least, let's talk about Opal's Jubilee. Um, I will admit I was going to go and just skim through this just to make refresh my memory, and I did not really get a chance to do that. So, yeah, I feel kind of unprepared. But I, what I can talk about is whenever I think of that book, I still have this visceral feeling of satisfaction and the wrong being set right in someone's life but the scar is still remaining i don't know what about yeah. you carolyn here's this is what i remember when i i read this two years ago it is one of my favorite books too i think it was definitely my favorite book from 2015 that i read i emailed leslie lynch the author about this at the time in the book to me and talk about how something is wrong and setting it right josh who's the detective in this case um, is out with Opal kind of in reliving the crime she committed which was really a crime against her as well Pulsed by the evil that was done to her that he pulls the car over and vomits on the side of the road now not romantic in any way but it just showed the depth of I'm just laughing because like both you and I think a man <laughs> vomiting by the side of the road is like the most romantic <laughs> thing that could ever happen I don't know it what that says about us but it sounds right to me. <laughs> it just showed the depth at which he felt her pain. And I think that's what helps her start over. That's what's a new beginning. That someone else finally and feels her what she's gone through, what she's endured, and she's able to start fresh with someone because, you know, some of the kids, they kind of can leave their past behind. She's never leaving that totally behind what she's lived through the domestic mm -hmm. violence and she's spent 15 years i think it is in prison she's starting over but she can't ever quite leave that behind that's going to go with her the whole way and here she finds someone who's willing to take that on with her yeah and what i like about it i think the, the, new, the new beginnings is is especially um applicable again to someone that the new beginning was thrust upon he wasn't looking for it josh he was yeah. expecting that this was going to be this troublemaker who was, you know, pretty much probably going to be walking around with the recidivism t-shirt uh, on. I mean, if we've got the rut, oh, I'm living in a rut over at Green Gables. Over here in Louisville, we've got, you know, I'm, I'm going to head back to jail sometime soon and I'm probably going to hurt your mother, my employer, along the way. Um, in summary, I do, I do remember this part. Okay, so Opal just got released from prison and the terms of her probation 
say that she needs to have a job. So she is put in, she's dropped off basically in Louisville, Kentucky, and she's, which removes her from home. She wanted to get back to, um, well, she cut, did she, I, now I'm like drawing a blank. She's from Jubilee, which right. is a town in the Appalachians. Appalachians. I've also yeah. heard people call it Appalachians. Anyway, yeah, I think technically that's the correct, but yeah, in Pennsylvania we say Appalachians. We say Appalachians up here for the Appalachians because so we've got a little claim to some of them anyway. But anyway, yeah. uh, that's and that's your geography lesson for this evening. Vanilla <laughs> Ice will be on next. No, still kidding. No vanilla ice. Um, you know, a country girl, basically, who got thrust into jail. And yeah, it's a women's prison, but I do remember from that book, it was not a pleasant place to be. It was not, and I admit, I don't watch Orange is the New Black, so I don't know if there are any parallels, but it's it wasn't a pleasant place to be. It was a harsh world. And so she's finally released, and she gets this job at a quilt shop. And it turns out the woman who employs her at the quilt shop, her son is a detective for, I believe, Louisville City Police. Um, and so he's kind of got an eye, what, keeping an eye out on Opal and figures that she can help him with a cold, solve a cold case. And so that develops his interest in, in her, not, again, not as a person, not as a human, but as a tool to help him you know, seek the justice that he wants to find. He's not interested in justice for her. He doesn't think she deserves mercy. And again, that scene where he goes out to, with Opal to find some evidence, basically, I, that I don't want to give away because this is not as old as Anne of Green Gables. This is a, yeah. a new story, obviously. So yeah, you don't want to miss it. Um, and it's so powerful. And I like, again, how you know, I, I was joking before, Carolyn, about how, like, our idea, vomit is our idea of romance, but it's really, it shows that what romance is, it's not flowers, it's not, you know, candy, it's not even candlelit dates, what it is, is investing in another person's soul, and in what is, you know, right for them, in the eyes of God. And, you know, even if it means surrendering every single preconceived notion and every single habit that you've ever had, if that will bring good to that person, then you'll, you know, you'll, you'll take that up and do that. And, and Josh does towards the end, if I recall, yeah. I recall it was a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> was. Yeah, and I'm not much of one to cry at books. It really takes a lot, but I remember being teary at the end of this book. So, yeah, I, I just love it from beginning to the end. Yeah, it's just wonderful, wonderful book. I cannot recommend it enough. Opal's Jubilee by Leslie Lynch. Yeah, I think it's a great book. Okay, so with that said, it is now time. Here's your last chance to put a comment on the live chat. Those of you who are watching, if you could just type a little something, something in the live chat window, right hand corner, <coughs> top next to the screen, not like next to the viewing area or screen, and it'll give you like five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, two and a half. One, zero. Okay. Our winner is Barb. Barb has commented. Barb, you are the winner of the hard copy of um, signed by Leslie Lynch herself. Opal's Jubilee, uh, another book in the Appalachian Foothill series. Really highly recommended. Next month, Carolyn and I are going to be doing a boatload of different book signings um, in the Harrisburg and Philadelphia areas. So if you want to catch up with us or um, our books, please check our blogs, carolynastfalk.com or erinmccolcup.com, and you can find out where we'll be and what we're doing. Honestly, I haven't put that on my website yet, but I'm pretty confident Carolyn has. You have, right? I did. Yeah, okay, I saw yeah. there. All right, so go to carolynasphalt.com and pretty much where she is, I will be there following along like a little puppy uh, 
just about <laughs> actually following her along like a big giant puppy with glasses and gray hair <laughs> so that's um what we've got going on for next month carolyn do you have anything else going on um any special projects happening just trying to keep my head above the water yeah. that's all. <laughs> it's new beginning i mean hey that's why we went with new beginnings for september because september around here it's back to school it's new beginnings for everybody. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Okay, thank you all for viewing. We will see you next month when we talk about the afterlife. Ooh, spooky. We're going to be talking about um, Angelhood by Amy Catapan. That is a YA novel. We're also going to be talking about, oh, Angel Angelhood, let me back up. Angelhood does deal with suicide and the effects of. So, it's a really important book, I think, for um, current events, really. And it's also very powerful and uplifting and yet still honest. So highly recommend that. Let's see. We're also looking at Mummy Cat, which is mm -hmm. an absolute, Have you seen Red Mummy Cat yet, Carolyn? Not yet. I just brought it home from the library, but we haven't read it yet. Oh, my goodness. It's so cute. When I told my youngest that we were looking at Mummy Cat again, she, she did the little happy clappy thing. <laughs> and then last but not least, uh, we're going to be looking at Spectre by John Desjardins. Now, the uh, publishing situation for that is a little bit in flux right now. That's That book, I think, was released in 2014, 15, somewhere back there. So, yeah. 2015. Okay. Wonderful book. That whole series is fantastic. But those books are looking for a home right now. So if you're going to get a copy, you're going to have to buy a hard copy off of Amazon, I believe. Or um, yeah. you might be able to enter at library loan or get it from the library. See if your library has it. Spectre by John Desjarlais. D-E-S-J-A-R-L-A-I-S. -S. All right, guys. Say good night, everybody. Yes, good night. Good night. Happy Labor Day. <laughs> yes, happy Labor Day. Those of you who celebrate. I, even, yeah, okay, Labor Day here in the U.S. and everybody else does it in May, which is great, but right now is great too. Very toss. See you next month. God bless. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.